you should be unmute the camera also. No. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sushma. Good morning, Rukmini. Can you all hear me? Good morning. <laughs> Can you hear me, Nandini? Good morning, Rukmini. Yes, you heard me. We were just testing whether the volume is right. Yes, thank you, Rukmini. Thank you. So, Ali will be joining us soon. Yeah, today being a special day, we had to change the timing. But Ali is on the way and he'll be back here soon. He will be taller. Oh, but, but Chashma also too light. 
Ali will not wear. He'll be here.
good noon and my sincere apologies for making you postpone this session by one hour because Deccan Herald is having its annual uh, education fest, which we couldn't do for the last two years. And they were very particular that I start off to launch it off with the keynote address or whatever you want to call it. So I spent a lovely morning with 500 ch children, which is always a pleasure to, you know, feel younger and younger as every year goes past. And I see the younger ones very enthusiastic and very, you know, lively over there. And so that's the reason why we had to postpone it to 12 o'clock instead of 11. I hope it has not inconvenienced uh, you people. Right. Now, the topic. Women in midlife. So this topic came up in our discussion. Normally, these topics evolve uh, you know, as a consensus when we sit down, sometimes in the lunch break, sometimes not the other ways, and we sit and start brainstorming based on our interactions, based on some counselees who may have come to us and all that. And then somebody comes out with this idea, and then if everybody approves, we go ahead. So this topic was selected, that is women in midlife. So what I thought was, first, let me talk to some women who have come to midlife and get their first person experiences. Okay. Because I'm neither a woman nor am I in midlife. So I will not be the right person to talk to you about it unless I hear it from the horse's mouth. And in this case, the mare's uh, uh, mouth. So you know what happened? I started looking for women who have come to midlife. And I looked and I looked and I looked. I couldn't find anybody. I found only young women. I found girls. I could not find any woman who has come to midlife. So what do I do? I said, OK, let me change uh, the topic without your permission. So I'm going to talk about what I refer to as GIW. I have coined this word, OK? Mind you, I've not uh, uh, copied it from somebody. GIW. As per my contention, is the great Indian woman. Whether she has come to midlife, whether she has come to old life, whether she has come to the end of the life, she still remains a GIW. So, what happens to the great Indian woman when she chronologically goes beyond a certain stage? So, every boy or girl is born into a family. Most of us have had the privilege of being brought up by loving, caring parents, sometimes grandparents, whoever was there in our family. Then as we grew up, we had our aspirations, both in terms of uh, wanting to create an identity, study something, make a career or whatever. And on the other side, marriage, family, having our own you know, uh, home, all these things. Once all that is done and you have come to a particular stage, that is, Maybe you are in your late 30s or early 40s or even late 40s. Now, when that happens, certain changes uh, take place, which uh, that's the reason why I took up this topic today. A lot of people become either complacent or they try to ignore. They try to pretend that it doesn't happen. It is a fact that midlife brings with it a lot of changes both internal as well as external. But as I said, many of us, particularly women more than men, tend to look at it as though this is part of my karma. This is what has happened to me. So I just have to accept it. Because even today in the 21st century, girls are brought up to believe that you have to accept what your family, your destiny, your in-laws, your husband, whatever they say, you have to accept it. You cannot afford to be a rebel. You cannot afford to create your own path or identity because you're always part of the family. That is our Indian culture. That is our tradition. And that is what we want to continue and believe in even now. Fine. I am a person who strongly believes that family is the greatest anchor. Family should be your number one priority. You can face any amount of disturbances, any amount of opposition, any amount of roadblocks, hurdles, if you have a loving, caring home or family to come back uh, to. 
So that is there. There's no doubt about it. And hopefully it will continue to be there, even though the family is shrinking, family is diluting, but still it does exist. At least in our uh, culture, you know, we still have this thing of the significance that we give to uh, families. And women give 10 times more significance to their uh, uh, families than anybody else. Take a simple example. If I were to be talking to a group of 40 plus men and I ask them, you know, describe yourself. Who are you? What are you? Something. So the person will immediately start off by saying that, uh, you know, I'm a mechanical engineer and I work in such and such organization or such and such uh, this thing. And uh, now I am the uh, senior vice president and I am doing this and I am doing that. And I also love to play tennis and I have this hobby and I do this uh, uh, painting in my free time. Full stop. You ask a woman of the same age group, please define yourself. I am a mother of two children. My elder one is now come to high school and uh, you know, not studying very well. My younger one is doing well and is still in primary uh, school. I had a very good upbringing and I am very thankful to my um, parents and I have a lovely family and I also have a very loving, caring uh, uh, husband because they have to say that, no, you, you can't leave that out. So they add that uh, uh, also. And that is how they define themselves. Now, what does it mean in terms of their actual life? If their identity, if their definition is only by the roles that they play, that is what I keep reminding, whether it be men or women. Women all the more so because men's identity changes. Men can be, uh, what do you call it, a senior vice president today. He may be an entrepreneur uh, uh, tomorrow. He may be a director of something day after tomorrow. But most women, once they get into domesticity, into family responsibilities and all that, it continues for a very, very long time to uh, come. Of course, the time comes when children fly out of the nest. So by the time you've crossed 40, you probably have children who are growing up and getting ready to fly out of the nest. Good. So will your identity change? You have invested 20, 25 years of your life in bringing up your children. And now that you have made them capable and they have their own ambitions and desires and they are also you know, skilled and they are cap you know, capable of uh, uh, moving out and creating their, this thing, do you let go? Unfortunately, not all women find it easy. That is the first thing that I wanted to discuss uh, uh, today, that are you, if you are a person who has spent a lot of time you know, bringing up your family and nurturing your uh, family, which of course includes uh, children. And even if it includes your parents or your in-laws, it includes your spouse. Have you come to that stage where you are willing to let go? To take an example, if you are well into your 40s, it's likely that your parents have crossed 60s and gone into 70s, maybe, maybe even touching 80. Now, lifespan is lifespan. Are you mentally tuned into the fact that my parents, who have been very loving, caring, who have done so much for me, who have brought me up in such a good way, helped me to settle down in my own life, even helped me after I got married and when I had my child, even there, they were so helpful and they were so supportive and they've done so much for me. The time is coming when they may be no, they may not be around. Worse than that, if they are around, but if they become bedridden or they develop dementia or they become incapable, my whole equation with them is going to change. Now, I will become the caregiver. They were caregivers as long as I was a child. Today, I am going to become a caregiver and we don't know for how long it goes on. I know people in their middle ages who had a parent who is bedridden for two years, five years, 10 years, 12 years. They take care of uh, them. But how does it affect life? Are you willing to accept that this is also part of life. See, most of them, when any such thing happens, either they lose their parent or they find their parent has become incapable, 
it comes as a shock. It comes as something which is, you know, I had never thought that this is what is going to happen to me. I had taken it for granted that uh, life will always be like this. Yes, they are growing old and they will be less uh, capable than what they were in their youth. They will have to take care. I will also have to take. But beyond that, many of us do not look. The woman who has decided that even if I'm married and if I have my own uh, spouse and children, I will still ensure that I give attention to whoever it is. It could be parents, it could be in-laws. But I am going to take that responsibility as an add-on and as a compulsory part of my duties that even if I have children who are struggling with their studies and I have to take care of them, even if I do not have domestic help, even if I have so many other issues, I will still ensure that my elders are not neglected, be it my parents, be it my in-laws. Now, what I am asking is those of you who have not faced such a situation, please mentally prepare for it. It is inevitable. It's only a question of time before they become very old and either they become incapable or whatever, or they eventually pass away. Here comes a very important thing. When a person loses the second parent, it hits you like a ton of bricks. Slowly, it doesn't happen the day of the death. It creeps up on uh, you. Let's say somebody had a mother whom she loved very much. She was very close to her. She would share anything and everything with her. And mother and daughter were more like friends, etc., etc. And the mother passes away. She's shattered. She's extremely unhappy. She goes through a very bad trauma. Then she slowly accepts it and she moves on. Now her father is still alive. She doesn't share the same equation with her father. She can't talk to her father the way she used to speak to the mother. She doesn't relate, connect. Yet, she says, no, this is my father. I have to take care of him. He is growing old. He has certain requirements. I need to take care of this or that or whatever it is. She continues doing that. And then he becomes quite old. Age catches up with him as it is. He may have been 10 years older than his wife. Then he lives another 10 years or whatever it is. And finally, he passes away. Now, normally, what should happen is that this death should not affect a person. You are already, as I said, 30, 40 plus. You have your own family. You have everything uh, going. And your father was more like a person to be taken care of out of responsibility rather than somebody whom you loved and closely connected with. So when that happens, it should not be difficult, right, to be able to cope. It is. You know why? Because when you lose the uh, second um, parent, it is like the roof over your head has been removed. Up till now, my identity was I am daughter of so and so. Now I am no longer daughter of anybody. I am next in line. Your father may have been 40 years older than uh, you. So if he has passed away six months back, you have another 39 and a half years to go in the same uh, sequence. But you start worrying about it right now. Your mortality, you don't even realize it. It happens at the subconscious level. Your mortality starts stinging you. And you start thinking the next in line to go is me. There's nobody left. My mother went away long back. Now my father's gone away. These are some of the things which I want you to be aware of. The same thing with within uh, you know relationships and spouse and all. 20 years after marriage, there are very few marriages which can claim that we are as close or closer than what we were when we started our journey together. Hats off to such people. They're not just lucky. Yes, luck may have played a, a part of it and they may have had the good fortune of getting a very good partner. But believe me, they have worked for it. They have continuously struggled towards it. They have had their own shares of differences, anger, fights, disappointments. But someday they accepted it that I have to keep adapting, I have to keep moving, I have to keep on improving on this uh, thing. And they did it. And that is the reason why today they find that 20 years, 30 years after marriage, we are still as close, maybe closer than what we were in our younger 
days. But the reality is, not everybody is so fortunate. If you find that your relationship with your spouse is not the same, and it may not be your fault at all. It may be just that your spouse has come to that stage where his career is more important than anything else. He has reached a stage of heavy responsibility or whatever you call it, and he feels that, you know, I have to work hard, I have to struggle, I have to do this, I'm, you know, I have to look after hundreds of my subordinates, maybe various reasons, or I have to save up for the uh, future, the way inflation is going, unless I have so many crores and so much property, I will not be able to be comfortable in my old age. All those thoughts come to the person, and the person drifts away from his spouse. He doesn't realize that his wife is a very emotional, sentimental, loving, caring type of person who values the relationship, the bonding, the warmth, 10 times more than the money that you are saving up or the properties that you are uh, uh, building. So I'm just giving an example. If anything like this happens and you find yourself drifting away and not having as much connection with your spouse as before, are you willing to accept it? It's part of life. It's not everybody who can have the same equation with the, the life partner throughout life. Maybe we'll again get closer 20 years ahead when he retires and he realizes that now he is no longer the big boss and nobody cares for him. Maybe he'll come back, you know, wagging his tail to me. Let's always be optimistic. Let's hope for the good. But right now, are you willing to accept that you cannot have too many expectations from this relationship? This person is very busy doing whatever he wants to do. And the third level, as I mentioned, is children. Children, definitely today's children are growing up so fast. They have a mind of their own. They have their own thinking. They have their own ideologies. They want to do what they want to do. And it can lead to a lot of conflict if the mother does not grow along with the children. Every time that the child takes one milestone ahead, the mother also has to grow with the child. And to understand and accept that my child is no longer a small child. My child does not need 24 by 7 attention. In fact, if I give too much attention to my child, he gets very angry. Our relationship deteriorates. Why are you sp uh, spying on uh, uh, me? As Aditi has put in just now, give space to e each other. As a mother, are you willing to give space to your children? My son locks himself in the bedroom for hours together. Yes, that's what he chooses. As long as he's balancing life, as long as his academics, his other social life, whatever it is going, okay. If he doesn't want to meet relatives, if he doesn't want to spend time with the elders in the family, he wants to spend more time locking himself up and doing whatever it is, accept it. And then finally, it comes down to what uh, I mentioned, that it comes down to the uh, you know uh, empty nest. However good your children are, however good your equation has been with the children, however much you have enjoyed their uh, uh, company, the day is not far off when you wake up in the morning and you realize your child is not in the home. Your child is far away, either in boarding or hostel or something, or having taken up a job somewhere, or having got uh, uh, married and has started his or her own uh, uh, family. Yes, Vinita has added a very nice uh, statement. Give space and trust them. This is what I uh, also wanted to say. I'm glad Vinita pointed it up to us there. You know? What are you doing behind closed doors? What do you do on the mobile? Why are you, uh, you know, whispering and talking on the uh, phone? It's okay. He doesn't want to share with uh, you. He's growing up. He wants to have his privacy. He wants to have his identity. Give him that little bit of uh, trust. Continue to encourage the child to have an open communication regardless of which part of the world the child is going to be. That should be our goal. Not to you know, keep policing them, not to keep disciplining them and stuff like uh, that. Okay. So, who are the women who when they come to this, let's say 40s or whatever it is, and can continue to live life smoothly? There are some people who have done certain things up till that point of uh, time, which ensures that they will be able to face all these challenges and changes that I spoke about uh, just now. And 
in case you have not done it so far also these are the pointers which will help you it's never too late even if you are 55 years old or 75 years old it doesn't matter even today you can think in terms of bringing about these changes okay so i uh, made out these points and i requested my team who is very very creative and very tech savvy which i am not uh, and they made it into a wonderful little slide which sort of illustrates the points which i want to share with uh, uh, you what uh, women who can face midlife issues smoothly what are the characteristics or what are the skills or what are the habits of such uh, uh, women what do they need to uh, do starting with the first one who are these women who can face midlife issues smoothly the first uh, point is those who have been balancing home and work life women who have sacrificed their career their identity thinking that i will give all my attention to my children and to my spouse they are in for a disappointment women who are upwardly mobile very ambitious and they've been chasing their career and neglecting their home life they are in for a disappointment here i'd like you to uh, if you have the time and inclination read up the uh, autobiography of indra nuyi indra nuyi you may recall was the ceo of pepsi pepsico and pepsico is far beyond the cold drink pepsi it's a giant fortune 500 organization and she was an indian girl born and brought up uh, here in chennai and went to us and eventually went on to becoming the ceo of uh, pepsi at a time when she had two young daughters growing up the daughters were going through adolescence and finding their identity and mother was on the verge of you know reaching the top in her career how she managed that it's wonderful if you read that the next point is those who are not given importance to position and status hence retirement is not a threat they have the choice who say if i want i can retire right now and relax i can cut down on the pace of the work that i am doing and slow down which may mean less money or less promotions but i will continue to be you know in my domain specialization be a productive member of society and get spend more time with the family or those who say enough is enough let me uh, you know uh, take uh, an off and move on i know a lot of women who have done that they've had the courage to give up very promising careers by the time they put in 20 years of service many of them have you know are on the verge where they can rise further up and they can really do wonders in their career but they have decided to you know uh, give it up in indranu's uh, uh, book she mentions that when she was having problem with her daughter she requested her mother to come from india and be there at home so that she can take care of the um, children and one day the mother told her that you know you go to work and you are the big shot over there you have a crown on your head because you are the big boss she said what i want you to do is when you come home and you park your car remove the crown and keep it in the garage and then walk in to the home so symbolic so simple this grandma's uh, wisdom as they say remove that crown keep it in the garage and walk in to greet your uh, uh, children next point is those who are not afraid to admit ignorance for example latest technology by the time you have put in 10 years 20 years into your adult life something new something different is inevitably coming up if you are not scared and you say yeah in my times this didn't uh, exist just to give you an example when i studied in iit bombay there was no question of a computer science engineering department in fact we didn't have an electronics department it was part of electrical engineering so what's the point in saying that i have studied in a premier institution i have held this position i have done that be uh, not afraid to admit that yes certain things i am very good at 
certain things like this newfangled technology and not good at. The next is detachment from issues which are connected to your parents, your in-laws, so many of the elders. See, you'll be very fortunate if you have elders who are still very reasonable, who change with the times, who understand that they have to give space and they have to, you know, adapt themselves to the changing times and to the younger generation. Not all of them can do it. Now, if you have an elder in your family, you know, who is criticizing you, I have brought up four children. You have one child and you can't take care of that child. What sort of a mother are you? Yes, when you brought up four children, you had a joint family of 15 people. You had four servants in the house. You had so many things. Children had the you know, facility of just roaming around wherever they wanted. We didn't have to give them any attention. And they grew up. They learned from each other, from the elders, from the family members. Today, I have to bring up my one and only child by teaching everything from A to Z to the child. But will that logic work if you try to tell that to mother? No, she's convinced that you're not doing a good job. So what do you do if you can detach yourself mentally and emotionally? Detachment is the key. Don't argue, don't fight. Don't try to change your method just because they said it. Nod your head. Keep saying who, who. Keep saying, yes, I will try. Thank you for your advice. I will seriously think it over. I will try it out and continue to do what you are doing. That brings us to the next uh, one. That you, Are you keeping good overall health? Are you maintaining your weight, monitoring parameters? I would even go to the extent of saying, are you grooming yourself well to look attractive? I know so many women who are basically very pretty, very good looking, but they neglect themselves in form of dressing, in the form of, you know, adding weight or in the form of anything. And because of that, their self-esteem goes down. As it is, if they have been homemakers or if they've give, been giving too much attention to their family, nobody cares for uh, them. But if visibly also they are not good or their health is not good and they keep complaining, I can't do this, I can't do that. Nobody is there to you know help you. Next is letting go of uh, uh, children as they grow up. I've already mentioned this. Be there for them. Say, you need me, you call me. But I am not going to all the time insist that every day you must speak to me. You may be in the other end of the world, but you have to talk to me every day at certain such time. Don't do that. Let go of the children. Accept, not just tolerate your spouse. Poor communication, irritability. Come to a point where you say that, yes, this person is also going through a midlife crisis. Even if I can't help him or change him or correct him, at least I'll accept that these are the traits and I have to be with uh, that, at least for the next few years. Similarly, this is the time to accept your single status. If you're either not married or if you you know, lost your spouse for whatever reason, and if you are alone, this is the time when you start accepting and moving on in life with this status that you are in right now. Create an identity in terms of career, hobbies, social work. Identity, I don't mean you have to be a CEO or you have to be this or that or some big shot. But an identity to say that, you know, here is this person who sings so well that people always invite her and say, whenever we are having a party, we'd like you to sing some songs. Here's a person who does these beautiful paintings and people always appreciate uh, them. I don't do it commercially. I don't sell the paintings, but people do appreciate uh, uh, that. And lastly, something which is never spoken about, understand and deal with your own sexuality. Sexuality is so individual, so different from person to person. In the younger age, it just passes off. But later on, you have to be aware of your sexuality needs, your sexual compatibility with your partner, because it overflows into so many different areas. 
this in a nutshell are the things which you need to look into and beyond this as we always do we are going to have an open house i already see some very interesting uh, comments and questions that have come in the chat box but i am going to take them up as they say in the tv serials break ke baad so here is sima for you hello ladies in their middle life i am also one of them and happily enjoying it all these tips are tips which ali has given us from time to time empowered each one of us in fact uh, anis has just put up the diploma in counseling skills program you know whenever women especially of course a male are also men are also included but when women come here to enquire about our program to enquire about how they can upskill themselves or you know how they have given up their career uh, for uh, the sake of whatever raising up their children i don't know some of them like to call it sacrifice i would say it's a sacrifice because you're doing it for yourself right you also want to enjoy your motherhood but one you know once your kids have uh, grown out and you know going out of the nest what next so again this is a great time for us women in our middle life to understand okay what are see i have been a mother i've been a spouse i've been a daughter in law i've been a daughter i i played so many roles i've learned to manage the house finances so many things i'm capable i did come with my degrees or whatever it is now what can i do best and this is a great time to actually understand your passion and go and follow it so that's something that you know our best students honestly are the women especially in their middle life because they understand they have gone through various dynamics of relationships the ups and downs they've learned to deal with so many uh, things crises in their life so this is a great time for them to really go within and look out for uh, you know what next we have like 25 years of experience behind us and 25 30 years of experience ahead of us so this is one fantastic program to rediscover yourself very proud to announce that today we are starting the first team of dcs 23 the weekend batch and uh, as you know no theory no exam no pressure the the this is you know i won't even call it a course it's a journey to look within so if you are interested it's still not too late admissions are still open just reach out to us okay thank you over to ali and quickly i'll just show you the studio audience also while ali is yeah, settling yeah, yeah. Please, do, so, please do okay please so do. here just like you guys i don't know i hope you're able to see them hi <laughs> yeah yeah there you go all right ali back to you thank you and since we already have so many comments and questions can i request uh, anis to start putting them on one by one yes she has already done that riddhi says i have seen women who are scared to dress up nicely when going out with friends so that their family don't say anything yes family will say you know why because they are jealous you are far more good looking than they are you are more attractive you look so sweet and nice people look up at you people smile at you people make friends with you and that's why they get jealous all you have to do is be persistent when you start dressing up nicely be ready for all these comments and hits and all that for some time eventually they get used to it and they stop saying something try it out and see yeah next question ha ah, rukmini says i am proud to say that i have excelled in work life balance and thank you banjara for all my strength and all the points you are mentioning i managed it really well i take this as an opportunity to thank you ali and i take this as an opportunity to tell rukmini and so many others like her who have passed through our portals that you are role models please spread the word around tell them it is possible like the question that came up just now about you know dressing well and people pointing out it can be done you can be excellent role models to others and the next is from divya ali sometimes we tend to get frustrated when the family don't understand or acknowledge our caring or respect our feelings end of the day they come and ask what have you done where we feel to give up 
Yes, I know. What have you done? I have done something which is very meaningful, which is true to my conscience, which is a service to society, and which gives me immense peace of mind and satisfaction. You cannot measure it in monetary terms. But I know that this is what is my passion and this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not cheating anybody. I'm not taking away your rights. So please allow me to do what I want. I'm not saying you have to appreciate it. There are innumerable women like these who are doing excellent work and their family refuses to even acknowledge or accept that they are doing anything worthwhile. They're, in fact, they put it down. I told you, no, slowly start becoming immune to all these comments. Yes, Sridhi says, and detachment is difficult. Yes, Sridhi, detachment is difficult. It is not impossible. Just keep that in mind. Right? The next. Kavita says, how is middle age actually different from the rest of our life? That's a very you know, deep question. We'll talk about it, Kavita. Anyway, you're now part of us in the DCS, so we'll be taking up these things. The only thing I wanted to tell you is that this midlife that we are talking about today is a phase which passes off. And if you have, you know, it's like a storm. Your ship is going in the calm seas and suddenly there's a storm. If you can manage to retain your ship's correct balance till the storm is over, there's again lovely calm seas ahead. And that we'll talk about later. Nandini says, belonging to DCS 14 community, life transformed positively. Thanks a lot, Nandini. These are the little, you know, uh, acknowledgements or appreciation which keeps increasing our motivation and our desire to continue with our humble uh, mission. Vinita said there are also some underlying expectations from women. If it's not being met, it affects the family, children, workplace, and most importantly, the women. Yes, there are. I don't deny that. But it should be reasonable expectation, no, Vinita. If somebody says, no, you have to sit in the kitchen the whole day, you have to take care of this and that. Even when you are saying that I have, you know, trained a very good person to do the cooking so I can have my freedom. No. How can you have a domestic help doing the cooking? You have to do. No, that's not a realistic expectation. The purpose is being served. Good food is being served. But if that is not uh, uh, enough to people, so be it. You have to learn assertiveness. Surekha says, how can a middle-aged woman make her loved ones understand that she is no longer as available as she was earlier was and she's going to prioritize her needs and wants now? One of the reasons for this, Surekha, is because many of you do not complain about your difficulties, your challenges and your hurdles. You just take it as part of the stride. After all, I'm doing it for my family. No, After all, I love them. That's why I'm doing it. No, So why should I tell them? Let's say there was a day when you were extremely tired. You just didn't feel like going into the kitchen, but you still did it and you made good food and gave it to them. They take you for granted. They think that that's what you have to do. But on that day, when they are enjoying the food, if you can tell them what I went through. Today, it was very difficult for me to prepare this meal because I was having this headache or this you know, leg pain or whatever I'm, I'm having. Start building it up step by step. Tell them I'm not complaining. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I want to do it. I'm not doing it as a favor to you. But I want you people to be aware of what I am doing. That's the way slowly it trickles in. Ah, Sonia says, I dress up nicely and people say it's for my own happiness, not for others. I feel good and happy by dressing nicely. Exactly, Sonia. That's what I want all of you to follow this basic uh, thing. It's for your happiness. And it also makes, you know, your genuine friends happy. Haven't you noticed that when you, you know, dress up nicely or something, there'll always be a very genuine, caring friend who looks at you and say, hey, you're looking so nice today. And you know that she means it. She's not trying to flatter you. Seema says, question sent on our office phone. Is it natural for women in 40s to get attracted to a colleague, even if much younger in age, especially if the spouse is not very responsive, caring, detached? Yes, I do want to tell the caller that it there's nothing wrong with it. It is something which is, I as you asked, is it natural? Yes, it is natural because a vacuum has been created. Your spouse was supposed to look after you, whatever else he may be doing. 
if there is a detachment, if there is a space and if there is a you know, neglect and the loneliness has set in, what do you do? Some of them, you know, get fully involved with their children, which also I don't uh, encourage because then children start feeling that you are a helicopter parent and you are you know, being too dominating and they don't like uh, the way you are all the time behind uh, them. Some of them go into spirituality, nothing wrong with it, but if you truly feel that your spirituality gives you that thing, it is fine. But some of us are more practical. Some of us crave for love. Some of us want something. So if it so happens that they get attracted, please do not blame them. Please do not put them down or condemn them. Try to understand them. Right? Roshan says, given up my great career to raise children, very happy doing that as my children have grown up according to the way they want it to be. Today, when I am beyond 70, I am free to do what I feel happy and it's a great achievement. See, more than me telling you, here are people who are talking to you. Here is Roshan who has just barely reached middle age. No, That is 70 is the beginning of uh, middle age, right? But she can reflect back based on her experience. And none of these people, I assure you, because I know them very well. None of them are exaggerating. None of them is trying to impress anybody. What Roshan said just now is a basic fact. She's just sharing it with us. And I'm thankful to Roshan for sharing it with us. Aditi says, I have understood that I really feel good when I do what I feel I can and necessary without any expectation or appreciation. That is the ultimate. That is what we should aim for. Of course, not neglecting others, not giving up on others' needs and not you know, stopping to take care of the others. But somewhere deep down, you should have this attitude, which Aditi said that I feel good when I do what I feel I can and what I feel is uh, necessary. Deepa says uh, many middle-aged women still living in past bad experiences with their family members. How to deal with it to lead peace of mind. Yes, I am always a person who advocates that when life has given you its big bats, its past um, experiences. That's why when people join every year for DCS also, one of the things which I ask them is that, do you recall any sad incidents in your life? Are you unhappy about something? If you're okay with it, share. Let's try to first resolve it. It is possible. And resolving doesn't necessarily mean coming to a solution of what you have uh, you know, uh, been through, but becoming more emotionally and mentally detached, calm and peaceful. There are ways and means of doing it. It has to be dealt with at an individual level, depending on what the past was, what were those experiences, how far back it is, to what extent they have left a trauma. Day in and day out, we work with it. And I always tell you, and Sima also keeps putting it up that, you know, we run a free counseling service. You can come over and chat with us. You can call us on the phone or you can log into our website and send even anonymous uh, uh, mails seeking clarification on whatever is important to you. Sri Rajeshwari says, DCS from Banjara Academy helped me for self-actualization and transformed me for what I am. Thank you. Yes, Sri Rajeshwari, I've been observing your trajectory and your progress far beyond DCS. She has done so many things step by step, step by step, slowly without using her husband also was uh, in a very high position, but she said, no, I'm not going to rest on the laurels of my husband. I'm going to create my own identity. And without a fuss, without too much of a show or anything, she has continued every step I have seen how she has progressed. And that is what life should be. If you learn something, be it from these years, be it from a guru or a teacher or whatever it is, if you can use that to move on and continue with your learning, that is where you have really achieved uh, something, right? Nandini says, today, independently practicing counselor and a life coach. Hearty congratulations, sir. Nandini. That is one of the best identities that you can have. You may not make tons of money, but you can earn. And you can have the satisfaction that you are changing and transforming lives. Do we have any more? No, OK. Not. So I have one or two points which uh, I wanted to share with you. One is, since we mentioned this thing about dressing up and things like that, uh, people who come to middle age, women who come to middle age, uh, 
either become over conscious about their body image or they want to totally not have anything to do with uh, uh, their body image they just don't care how they are looking what type of dress they are wearing what are people thinking about them i think that's not a nice thing to uh, do when you were 20 you were so conscious about your looks your figure your attractiveness your makeup your jewelry or whatever it is what stops you from doing it at 40 what has changed nothing has changed it is your mindset which has changed if you feel like dressing up in a particular manner if you feel like grooming yourself the way you want to uh, do please do not hesitate as we saw a little earlier there are people who will comment who will put you down these are all jealous people these are people who don't like to see somebody going up in uh, uh, life they are always there you heard about that story of the live crabs you know there was an order for export of live crabs and people went about collecting crabs put them in uh, you know wooden cartons and brought them to the port from where they were to be dispatched uh, on the ship one man who was walking on the uh, port he suddenly saw one you know crate of crabs which did not have a lid over it and he came running and saying oh these are live crabs they'll just you know climb over the sides of the crate and walk out the man who was in charge he said don't worry they won't go anywhere remember they are live crabs they can climb over the walls and they can jump out and they can disappear no they won't he said so how can you be so confident he said go and see so this fellow went there and he saw a lot of crabs on the bottom of the crate and then he would see one crab has slowly decided to start climbing over the wall of the crate so that he can jump out. Before he reaches the top, two crabs come, pull his legs and pull him down. Another crab trying to go up, two, three more crabs come, pull his leg and pull him down. And he said, see, this is why I tell you, they take care of it. We don't have to take care of uh, their uh, escaping. This may be a story. But sometimes it is applicable to human beings. You will inevitably have people who are jealous, who are insensitive, who like putting others uh, down. In fact, many of them have themselves have low self-esteem. Right. Roshan says, my DCS classmates were so encouraging and called me a little girl that I literally started dressing up to make them happy in the process. I got my confidence back. Yes. That is why I go on insisting and emphasizing on the fact that be in good company. If you have some relatives, neighbors, colleagues who are jealous of you, who pass nasty remarks about things like these, please insulate yourself from them. Even if you cannot leave them and go away somewhere, you have to spend time with them mentally emotionally first insulate yourself then look for people who are genuine like what roshan shared just now so she joins dcs she's one of the elders in that uh, uh, group but you know what her classmates did as she said they were so encouraging and they called me a little girl now how does that uh, feel it feels so nice and then you start dressing up better, you start presenting yourself better, you have a better smile on your face and things like that, right? Yes, Divya says, I too love to share after DCS. I'm seeing lots of changes in my life. I can transform, which I learned to introspect on my needs and wants and also feel happy about my progress in day-to-day -day life, conducting counseling sessions, and I feel blessed I am helping people by being emotionally supportive. Thank you, DCS, means a lot. Kindly note this. I feel blessed I am helping people. So next time somebody asks you, what is so great about what you are doing? What have you achieved? You can quote Divya by saying, I have achieved that feeling of being blessed because I am helping people and I'm being emotionally supportive. Yes, Suchetna, positive people around us is very, very important. 
you cannot get rid of some of the negative people around you. Doesn't matter. But you can spend more and more time with positive people. They are there. You just have to look for them. Like Roshan said, you know, did you know when you joined DCS that you will have such people who are younger than you, but who will call you a little girl? And it was not to flatter you. It was not that they said, oh, she's feeling this, she's elder than us, and she may feel out of place, so let us be nice. It comes out spontaneously with some people. And there are many people like that around us. They are quiet. They are invisible. They don't sort of intrude into your uh, life. But if you allow them to come into your life, you will find that your life improves so much. It can be done at every stage, at every age. But today, we are specifically talking about the midlife part of it. Because when you are younger, your resilience is much higher. When you are just growing up and you know exploring the world and you are creating your identity, if somebody says something, you can easily ignore that person or even put that person down and move on. <clears throat> when you are older, you know what you have achieved and what you did not want to achieve. You know where you stand in life. Most people who come to that, what we call as the sunset years or the you know senior citizens age, there's a certain amount of contentment that, okay, I am no longer in the rat race. I do not have to prove myself to anybody. I don't have I've fulfilled whatever basic responsibilities were there with regard to my family, my children, my parents, whatever it is. So I can take care of myself. But like I told you, my emphasis is on people who are in between, who still have their parents with them and the responsibility of their parents or their in-laws. Who have a spouse who's probably very hardworking, active, involved in a hundred different uh, things, or vice versa, not doing well at all and getting very frustrated with whatever is happening, becoming addict to certain substance abuse or whatever it is, either way. And you have children who are not yet fully grown up and flown out of the nest, so you still have responsibilities. Now, that is the stage that I'm talking about. That is the point where I said that you are going on this nice, heavy, stable ship on the ocean and a storm has come in. The storm is throwing your ship left, right and center. Your ship will, looks as though it might even drown. But in most of these storms, what happens if there is a good captain who understands which direction to change, how to maneuver the ship what to do with the sails or with the engine or whatever it is. It is difficult. It is very difficult at times. It looks as though, you know, you're just going to topple over. People start vomiting all over the place. People faint. All that happens. But if you can hang on with that storm, the storm has to pass. No storm goes on indefinitely. And once the storm is over, you have the beautiful calm sea ahead of you and you can continue. That's what happens in real life. You may, I'm just preparing you mentally, you may face a storm during your middle age. As I gave you in the tips and uh, pointers, those who either prepare for it in advance, you know that proverb which says, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. So let us hope none of these things will happen to you. You will continue to have very loving, caring and active parents who grow up, uh, continue till 100 years of age. You may have a spouse with whom you continue to have very good communication, understanding, relationship throughout your life. You may have children who don't need anything from you. They carve out their own path. They move on. They do whatever you want. That is what we should hope for. But what should we prepare for? That one or two of these three parameters may hit me. And I'm not even uh, included in that the job or the career. Because thankfully, the great Indian movement today is willing to sacrifice her career for the sake of the family. That is what I'm seeing left, right and center. Men get into a lot of problems during their midlife because 
they give too much importance to their job, their status, their career, their promotions. And that makes them miserable. Their stress levels go up. They get absolutely mad. But innumerable women that I know of, even if they have been achievers, even if they have done exceedingly well in their career, they are willing to give it up, saying that my family, more than that, my peace of mind is more important than that salary check or that extra promotion status or whatever it is. I don't mind. I'll give it up. And if somebody asks, I will very happily say that I'm a uh, homemaker. That being a homemaker itself is something to be very proud of. There are very, very few men that I know who are actually homemakers. They may achieve in various things, but you give them the home to look after, they'll make a mess of it. They will not be able to run the home even for a few days. Whereas probably if the wife is given charge of her husband's job, she may do exceedingly uh, well. That is what people don't uh, realize. The significance of this great Indian woman who even in the 21st century, who may have come from a very cultured and educated family, who may have had the best of education and who may have put in a lot of hard work to acquire academic you know, success, who may have you know, proven herself and yet she is willing to make certain sacrifices, is willing to you know, take a back seat when it is necessary and not mind it at all. This is something which is amazing in today's world. I don't know whether the next generation will have that type of thinking or not. Because I do see a lot of young women who are willing to give up on their boyfriends just because their career doesn't fit in with plans of marriage. It is already there on the horizon, but that we'll see as and when it comes. When these people come to the middle age, probably they may find their own solutions and they may create a better path for themselves. We will, as I said, no hope for the best. But they are not my concern right now. My concern right now is those who have done so much for themselves, for their family, right from parents to spouse to children, who have done so much in terms of whatever work they have done, they have contributed whether they were school teachers or doctors or high-flying executives or whatever they have done, they have achieved the um, thing. Once that is done, you know that, yes, you are on the right track. Deepa says, can we get the link to watch the session later as I joined in late? Will you, Sima, will uh, yes, yes. Uh, put in the link? And you can spread this word to all your friends and acquaintances that this does not disappear once the session is uh, over. It remains on Facebook. You can access it anytime at your convenience or even in installments, watch for 10 minutes, again, give a break, again, come back and watch the rest of it. Uh, you know, those uh, facilities are there. I would like you to avail of those facilities. So anybody who can benefit from it, as you know, this is a free service, part of our mission in Banjara to reach out to as many people as possible, to give emotional support, to encourage people to enrich their own lives through empowerment. And this is what uh, um, it is. And uh, Seema has put it up that it is available on Facebook. So go on to Facebook, go on to Vanjara Academy's Facebook page, and you will uh, get it uh, from there. Munira says, it is awesome. Vijay Lakshmi says, thank you. And Deepa says, thank you for uh, wonderful. Suchetna says, thank you. So my thanks to all of you. And as we always do, we start and end on time with one extra announcement today that next Saturday, I'm going to be in a very nice picturesque uh, uh, place called Brahmavar. I'm going there for a group of educational institutions and I'm going to be spending the weekend with them. So I will not be taking this uh, FB session uh, next Saturday, but the Saturday after that, Back to 11 o'clock, you will have the title which Anis is putting up for you. Thank you and bye-bye. Why do you always do this? <laughs> Haven't you heard people making those statements? Yes. <clears throat> Let's find answers. Thank you and bye-bye.